case back on the track. Which I don't know all of them. I should just one of them. That I find other examples. The watch space on YouTube is getting pretty crowded, which I think is great because it gives viewers more choices and access to more enjoyable content than ever before. However, there are only so many hours in a day to watch videos, so I thought I would share with you who I watch the most. Just to be clear, these are not listed in any order of preference. With all that said, let's get started. First up, we have TGV over at the Urban Gentry. Without him, there would be no Elizabeth Grant channel, so if you hate me, blame him. When I first started watching watch videos on YouTube many years ago, he was the one I discovered first, and I've been watching him pretty regularly ever since. He has first-class editing and great sound editing as well, and he's one of the few people who can get away with such a relaxed pace because of his soothing speaking voice and his calm demeanor. Oftentimes when I watch videos, I feel a bit impatient, but not when I'm watching the Urban Gentry. Over the last seven years, he has probably taught me more about watches than anyone else. Next up, we have a relative newcomer to the space, though her channel is about a year older than mine. Britt Pierce is someone who I've been watching very regularly lately. Now I'll admit when I first discovered her, I didn't watch her that much. Often, I didn't know what she was talking about. Like, I don't know who Timepiece Gentleman is, and I don't know where he disappeared to or whatever, so I didn't end up watching those kinds of videos. But over the last six to nine months, the quality of her work has been steadily improving. But much more importantly, her reasoning and her opinions about a lot of what goes on in the watch space have become increasingly insightful. I thought her Omega is the new Rolex video was very good. I had been having similar thoughts myself, but I hadn't put them together enough to make that video. I think Brit's doing a great job and she just keeps getting better and better over time. So I've been watching Christian over at Theo and Harris nearly as long as I've been watching the Urban Gentry. And I want to be clear about something. I still miss Anna. Whenever she made a video, I always watched it. She helped me see that there were other women out there that truly appreciated watches before anyone else. When she disappeared from the channel, I was initially bummed. Now, I don't know anything about the ins and outs over there, but it looked like she was just replaced by Michael Christie, at least from the outside looking in. So Michael definitely had his work cut out for him in making me a fan, but he eventually pulled it off. I think he and Christian are a fantastic combination. They have a great rapport and I enjoy their videos immensely. The video they did for Grand Seiko was first class and it was one of the best I've ever seen. On a separate note, Michael has his own channel associated with his clothing line and his plans to take over the world called The Iron Snail. I absolutely love it, and I think I've watched every video he's made. He has this frantic, borderline ADHD approach to filmmaking that I really enjoy. I love his editing as it fits seamlessly with his personality. We have similar opinions when it comes to outerwear, and he has taught me a lot about denim and wool as well. Next, we have Adrian Barker, whose channel used to be called Bark and Jack. Now, I like to make fun of Adrian. I like to joke that his channel is the house that Rolex built. I like to pretend that whenever I drink from my Bark and Jack mug, it makes me want to uncontrollably start talking about Rolex. But it's just me joking. The guy makes really great videos. He's very knowledgeable about watches, watch companies, and his reputation is beyond reproach. His video called The Best Rolex Sports Watch is one of the best watch videos I've ever seen. He is one of the best in the space and he is a must watch for me. You know, the funny thing is, I didn't know who Oshino Mali was until about a year ago. He gave me a shout out on one of his live streams after I made a video pillaring the moon swatch and I started watching his channel out of curiosity after that. Over time, I enjoyed watching more and more. He's another one of those guys who can just take his time and talk about watches or whatever and you don't end up feeling impatient. If an hour goes by, that's cool. You probably enjoyed it the entire time. His videography is some of the best around and his use of the city is unparalleled in the space. I think his video about Grand Seiko was particularly inventive and enjoyable and it happens to be one of my favorites. I suppose one could make the case that you could watch WatchFinder videos for Andrew Morgan's voice and diction alone. Seriously, that guy should be doing commercial work with a voice like that, as well as maybe audiobooks. But they do know quite a bit about watches and watch history over there at WatchFinder. There's so many videos. You could go down a rabbit hole and hardly ever come back up. Andrew also has his own standalone channel, Talking Hands, which I watch as well. It's really good stuff and I anticipate that it'll be huge in no time. Last up, we have You're Terrific. 
I think he's probably one of the funniest guys in the watch space, and his videos are of a fairly high quality as well. I'm constantly surprised that he's not one of the biggest watch YouTubers out there, and I highly recommend his channel. Every time he puts out a video, you can be sure that I'm gonna watch it on the first day, and I seriously wish I could write like him. So those seven are the ones that I try not to miss whenever they put out something new. But there's plenty of people that I watch at least part time. People like Bruce Williams, who makes so much content. If I watched all of it, I'd never have any time for anything else. Then you have Frederico Talks Watches, who knows so much about the watch industry and the watches that he talks about. There's Tim Masso, who I will use a lot for a reference if I have a question about a watch. The Mad Watch Collector, who is making some of the most entertaining videos in the space. His channel is exploding in popularity right now, and he really deserves the success. In the boot slash shoe space, I watch Roseanneville so I can learn more about the boots that I'm considering. I watch Trenton and Heath pretty regularly because I enjoy watching and listening to boots and shoes being resold. I find it relaxing, and I think their videos are very informative as well. Lastly, if we're talking about everyday carry and outerwear as well as boots, then I also watch Carl Murawski. He's very well informed as well as entertaining. He makes great videos and watching him has really expanded my interests. So that's it. I would say that those are the people that I watch the most. And that's not to say that there aren't some other really great YouTubers out there in the watch space, but there's only so many hours in a day that I could dedicate to watching other people's content. I work full time and these videos you see me in, they don't make themselves. Some of my bigger projects can take over 12 hours, but I do it for you guys. I do all of this for you. Anyway, let's have a conversation in the comments section. Let me know who your favorite or who your least favorite YouTuber is and why. But if you liked this video, then I assume you'll like this other similar content I have picked out over here for you guys. Regardless, whether you're one of my loyal subscribers or you're just stopping by for the first time, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.